First of all, I would like to thank the organizers, Didina and Jasper, for uh, making this uh, wonderful event uh, happening. And uh, also, I would like to, to thank Hubert. Uh, I know Hubert for, uh, for now 13 years. It's quite a long time. <laughs> First time I met Hubert, in, it was in the Zouche school in 2008. And uh, actually, the moment I met Hubert and we started to discuss, uh, that was a pivotal moment in my life with radical consequences. <laughs> and uh, since then, uh, uh, Uber was always very supportive and uh, uh, was for me a huge source of inspiration. Thank you, Uber, and happy birthday. Um, and uh, today it will be a, um, a work um, on some generalizations of loop models. Uh, this is a work with Jasper Jakobsen, who is here, and with our student, Augustin Lafay, who is also there. Uh, Augustin is, uh, I should say, a uh, fantastic student. Uh, actually, most of the work, it, it, it's about two papers. Uh, we, they are on archive, and most of, most of the work is, is due to him. Um, and uh, so if you have any questions, uh, please talk to, to Augustin. Uh, <laughs> OK, so let me first uh, remind you some uh, basic facts about loop models. Uh, this is just a statistical model of self-avoiding simple curves on 2D lattice, say hexagonal lattice. And to every, uh, the, the lattice is made of nodes and links. And we place, uh, to, to, uh, to construct a configuration, we place a bond on some links. And so they form a loop. And we, we put local statistical weight to every bond, say x. And we have a non-local weight, uh, topological weight. Uh, for every loop we, we have in the configuration, we, 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 we have a weight n. And it's known where uh, modulus of n is less or equal to 2. Uh, the, the model has critical uh, uh, points uh, that are dilute and critical um, uh, regimes. Uh, and uh, I mean, many people study this model since, uh, since, since, since end of the 70s, right? Uh, especially in the 80s. Uh, and the continuum, uh, probably column gas, is, uh, is one of the best uh, tools to, con to, to study continuum limit of, this, of, this, of these models. And in particular, uh, Hubert with DiFrancesco and Zuber, they, and Duplantier and Cardi, they, uh, they had the pioneering works on, on, this, on these models. Uh, um, and we all love them, right? Uh, because the, the, they have nice applications, uh, numerous nice applications. They're beautiful and, 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 and they're useful in polymers, percolation, describing guiding spin clusters. And also in, in, in math, uh, they, they have deep connection to, 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 to such mass, much mass, mass subject as invariant theory and node theory. For example, they are deeply connected to Jones polynomial, Jones invariance of nodes. And uh, also there is a um, nice connection to non-rational CFTs uh, via famous Kusador formula. And recently, uh, people computed, including, of course, Hubert and other people uh, computed these um, three-point and four-point uh, collation functions. Uh, uh, for me, um, I think about myself most more more uh, represent as, as a representation theorist. For me, uh, the 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 interesting or the interest in, in loop models is that uh, they are deeply connected to uh, to quantum group theory. For example, um, uh, loop models they uh, admit a transmatrix formulation. So one can write uh, the, in terms of so certain local rules. And uh, local, local reformulation of a loop model is basically theory of UQSL2 invariants. So um, from this point of view, local bits of the loop model you can think as UQSL2 invariant operators. And this is how uh, these famous algebras appear, like temporal leap or dilute temporal leap algebras. Um, and uh, why not, from this point of view, uh, why not to to try to, um, or to think at least about statistical models where local beads uh, would be uh, UQSLN or some other quantum group invariant operators. Right, from this point of view, it's, it's quite natural to, to think about invariant theory or, or theory of invariance for high rank quantum groups. And, and this is actually well known. Uh, so the, the, the um, it's not just, invariant theory, but diagrammatical uh, calculus for the invariant theory, what is important for us. And in EQCL2 case, as I said, it's temporal leap algebra. And uh, in, in, in higher rank, it's, 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 it's quite well known for mathematicians. Uh, actually, for, from very long time, uh, from pioneering work in 1992 by Cooperberg, 
uh, he studied uh, the grammatical calculus for invariance of quantum SL3, and he has developed an uh, approach to classification of, of invariance of quantum SL3. Uh, in, say, you take tensor product of uh, in any combination of fundamental and dual to the fundamental representation. So you take any, any product in, in any kind of order. And he classified invariants, or QSL3 invariants in such terms of product in terms of so-called spider diagrams. Uh, maybe I will give you uh, an example, right? So, so uh, 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 an elementary kind of smallest spider diagram you can imagine is, 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 is it's, it's, it will be these type of diagrams. Instead of pieces of loops, like, like temporal leap generators, we will have uh, diagrams with uh, uh, bifurcations or, or branchings, okay? And and then many people since then contributed to generalizations to higher ranks, like uh, I just mentioned some of them in 1998. Uh, Murakami, Otsuki, Yamada, they introduced so-called Moi invariants. They, 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 are in, um, uh, they use the spider type diagrams to construct uh, not invariants that generalize Jones polynomials to UQSLN. And, and, and then there was quite a few other people. And, and, and the important uh, band of people for me is Cautis, Kamnitzer, and Morrison. In 2012, they introduced very convenient language, uh, geometrical calculus for UQSLN type diagrams. Okay, but but for physicists, uh, all the, all these works they they basically uh, unknown, uh, and we don't know any any physical model which would be based on this on these type of diagrams. Uh, and for, for mathematicians, the motivation was of course just low, low dimensional topology, and somehow strangely, even representation theoretical point of view, uh, uh, not much was studied, um, and. And in our work, we, we, we introduced uh, a family of, of statistical models that, that, that use these mathematical ideas. Okay, so, so, so in, in, in SL3, so the, the models I, I'm going to talk about, they will have also local formulation and local bits of the model, they will be UQSLN invariant operators. And this is an example of UQSL3. So as you can see, as you can see uh, instead of just um, an edge of a loop, we will have also edges, but they are oriented. And the orientation is due to the fact that fundamental and dual to the fundamental representations, they're not isomorphic. So some arrows will be oriented up, some arrows will be oriented down. That means fundamental and anti-fundamental. And as you well know, probably uh, in the QSL3, if you fuse a fundamental with fundamental, you don't have an invariant. Instead, you have a sort of higher spin representation, but instead of an invariant, you have a second fundamental that appears in one, one of the channels. That's why you cannot write empty thing. So here you have, you have some, some branching at this point and, and arrow is pointing down. That means that in the fusion of two fundamentals, you have anti-fundamental. And then similarly, the anti-fundamental you can embed into the product of two fundamentals. That's why we have branchings. And for every SLN, it, there will be some branchings. Uh, okay. Uh, and why we are interested, okay, because there is new phenomena of branching. And also the models will, will, will describe domain walls in spin systems. So there will be interesting applications to, to spin models. Uh, also, we expect in the continuum limit uh, 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 to discover CFT with some W algebra chiral symmetry. And it would be, for example, interesting to see if we have these uh, um, families of W algebras uh, David Redoubt was talking about uh, on the first day. Uh, and of course, it would be very interesting to study Kuss Allure type formulas in high rank. Uh, okay, let me define the model. So we, we work with, uh, we, we are sitting on a hexagonal lattice and vertices and edges of the lattice I, I will be referring as nodes and links. And the uh, configuration is just drawing bones on some links with certain constraints, okay? So nodes, so the vertices of the lattice, they have valence zero, two, or three. So zero, two, it's like a loop model. And in addition to the loop model, we, have, we, we also admit valence three. So it's closed webs with three valent vertices. Each bone now is oriented. And orientations uh, conserved at two valent nodes. And vertices might be only sources or sinks. So all bones point in into the vertex or out of the vertex. And graph theoretical terms, it just says simply that each configuration as an abstract graph uh, is closed, planar, trivalent, and bipartite. So here's an example. Uh, so uh, these are bones, and so this is a, an example of a link. Then we place link, link, link. So they're all oriented, and you can see there is a vertex at some point. Uh, all bones are oriented, links are oriented in, in, inside. So this is a sink, this is an example of the source, and this is just a loop. And this is abstract graph corresponding to the configuration. Uh, now, imagine we have a configuration. It's a web. 
Uh, now we want to evaluate the configuration, first of all. Uh, uh, and I will first describe a non-topological, oh, sorry, non-local or topological weight of the configuration. And to evaluate the given configuration, uh, we use um, uh, the theory of EQSL3 invariance. And, and this is so-called spider relations, uh, which was introduced by Kuperberg. So for the loop, the loop we, we evaluate at uh, number, point number three instead of two. So it's Q squared plus one plus Q minus two. Uh, but then we might have configuration with a diagon. We call it diagon. Uh, so you see there is one arrow pointing up and there are two arrows down. And so there's uh, sink and source. So we evaluate at the just a line. So we remove diagon and instead we have a, a, a factor two, quant number two. And then there is a, this sort of spider, actual spider. So we, have, we might have also this square, square diagram. And square diagram, uh, so it, it should have this type of arrows or all arrows reversed. Any square diagram is evaluated into, it's basically split into two types of connectivities. Okay. So there are only these three, three rules, and plus rotated and arrow reverse diagrams. And, um, and Kuperberg has, has shown that they are well-defined. So any web can be evaluated in a unique way. So there might be several ways to evaluate it, because you can apply these rules in different order, and there might be several ways. Uh, but the, all, the result will be the same. So this is a non-trivial fact. And you can always evaluate uh, any closed web uh, using these rules, because there is a simple uh, graph theoretical reasons that a web component always has at least one polygon of degree zero, two, or four. So these rules uh, evaluate any web configuration to its weight, we call WK of C, uh, Kuperberg weight of, 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 a, of a configuration. Okay? Uh, and, and our definition of statistical model, um, uh, now to, I'm going to associate to, to bones and to vertices, uh, so local fugacities. So if bone is, uh, we have two types of oriented, uh, of oriented bones, uh, up and down. So we, 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 we just say to every bond uh, covered by a uh, link with orientation up, x1, x2 parameters, to the two types of, of vertices, we have parameters y and z. And, um, and, uh, and then we sum over all configurations of, of, of this. So we have a Boltzmann, for a given configuration, we, have, we just have such a Boltzmann weight, and we sum over all configuration. This is our partition function, where n1 is number of bonds pointing up, down, and, 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 and because the graph is bipartite, I have always same number of vertices, which are sinks and sources. That's why it just NV is number of such vertex pairs. Uh, here's an example. Okay, this was our example. Uh, so, for example, um, in, 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 the, in, this, in this configuration, the abstract graph, so first I calculate the, the Kuperberg weight, uh, or this, this non-local weight. So you see that I have, I have a loop. So I have, I have one, one uh, uh, um, uh, I have Q number three. Plus, I use diagon rule. You see this, this, this kind of theta graph. I, I have a diagon. I can use diagon rule to evaluate this part. So this part, I just replace then by, by a line n times factor 2. That's this 2. But then I, I have a loop. So that's why I have 3 squared in the end. And total weight of the configuration, if you count, there are uh, 22 bones pointing up. So I, I choose a direction. And 22, uh, 13 bones pointing down, and there are two vertices. Okay, one vertex is sink and source. Uh, sorry, so sink and source, and that's why I have y and z. So th th this is a, um, um, a statistical weight of, of this configuration an example. And there is interesting uh, a bijection, or there is interesting map to to, to spin models. Um, let me remind you what the, uh, what is a Z3 spin model. Um, so spin now leave a node of a dual lattice. It's a triangle lattice. And uh, between every uh, two nodes, I, I have interaction. I define interaction as some parameter x, as previous one. x uh, sigma j minus sigma i, where difference is taken modulo 3, of course, if j is uh, to the right of i. OK? And I norm we normalize x0 to 1. So that means that I have only two parameters, x1, x2. And this, this spin model associates a non-trivial weight, x1 or x2, to, to each piece of domain wall between unequal spins. Uh, if spins are equal, uh, there is no weight. Uh, or in other words, a link on the dual lattice, which is a hexagon lattice again, uh, that is dual to the link between two spins, uh, which are not equal, we associate um, a weight x1 or x2. Then we can orient accordingly. Accordingly, this link, we can orient uh, up or down if sigma j minus sigma i is 1 or 2. And you can observe that vertices appear at a junction of three spin clusters. 
That's obvious. And they are either sources or sinks according to how spins around them are, are, are arranged. So this is a quite an easy observation. But uh, so this map, so basically from the spin configuration, I constructed a spider configuration. And this is by bijection between web configuration and spin configuration, modulo the global Z, Z3 action, because modulo the global Z3 symmetry. So this is an example. We have a sp uh, spin configuration, and uh, so we have three spins. And applying that rules, you can reconstruct uh, this uh, spider diagram. And because you can uh, flip spins uh, cyclically in modulo 3, uh, that's why uh, to, to three different spin configurations, we have one uh, Kupferberg spider configuration. That's why, uh, OK, so the spin model in this case is just three times uh, uh, just product of this x1, x2, just of, of spin interactions. And notice that we have, in spin model, we have neither vertex weights nor non-local weights of, of corresponding domain walls, right? So, to, so the, the, um, the, the spin model is a particular instance of, the, of this uh, spider model. Uh, if and only if uh, the following relation is satisfied when the product of all uh, vertex fugacities times Kupferberg non-local weight of the configuration for every configuration if it's one, then a spin model is a particular instance of, of this of our web uh, model. And, and this is indeed holds uh, in, in this special point. If you take Q uh, eighth root of unity, QA power four, and the product of, of, of uh, two vertex fugacities is the inverse of square root of two. And uh, at this point, uh, indeed, the previous uh, condition is satisfied. And, uh, and the idea of the proof is, 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 is simple. It's just at, the, at these parameters, OK, because of root of unity, uh, the loop is one. And then these vertex fugacities, they can be absorbed into a new sort of modified uh, vertices. And, uh, so that's why I, I, I use this different notation. And um, um, uh, right, uh, the new sort of modified rules when we absorb fugacities into vertices, sort of, um, the, 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 the spider relation, they have more probabilistic uh, meaning. So for example, diagon is you do nothing. And when you have square, you just uh, square, you replace and you, you split into two configurations. But we, each one is probability one half if you want. So this way, uh, you can put uh, by induction that uh, um, uh, the condition is satisfied. OK, so uh, let me also say a few words about higher rank case. So at this point, we, we established a link, a precise link with, a speed, with Z3 spin model. How about, uh, and actually, the, um, the correspondence is similar as we have in loop model and a Z2 spin cluster or Ising model. So it's, 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 it's a similar correspondence. Uh, and uh, how about other higher spin models, Zn spin models? And for this, we need higher rank web models. Uh, and uh, we are using, to construct uh, web models with UQSLN symmetry, we're using uh, uh, diagrammatic uh, language of Kautis, Kamnitzer, and Morrison. And uh, so in, the, in, this, in this language, uh, webs are still closed-oriented planar trivial and graphs, but not necessarily bipartite. However, we have extra decorations. Not only orientations, we, the, the webs carry, uh, the edges carry now uh, a number from 1 to n minus 1, if you want so-called so kind of flow. Uh, and the flow uh, labels fundamental representation of UQSLN. UQSLN has n minus 1 fundamental representations. So this labels for, for, for them. And orientation I distinguished between two duals. So we still have orientations. And uh, now we have, so these are elementary kind of generators. We have uh, generators, they conserve the flow. So for example, we have now a uh, trivalent vertex with uh, K and L input legs, and output leg is K plus L. But now the, the vertices, the, no, the orientations are conserved. Um, and, and similarly, when, when it's like a mirror image. But now you see we have two orientations and N minus one uh, labels. So we have sort of too many, twice more than we need, because uh, uh, the representations are in pairs come with duals. For example, uh, dual to the k is uh, isomorphic to n minus k fundamental representation. And here there are also some technical thing, which called tags, so called two valent vertices, if you want. So the, the, the tags, they 
they, uh, they describe you uh, the isomorph, because one to isomorphism between dual to k and uh, n minus k fundamental. And, and vertices, if you want, is just projection operators from k's, tensor product k's fundamental, l's fundamental, you have k's plus, k plus l fundamental. So these elementary blocks, but uh, the whole thing is about rules, right? Because we want in there to evaluate some non-local web configuration made out of these kind of uh, graphs, uh, decorated graphs. Uh, we want to evaluate a statistical weight and, and the point how to evaluate it in a, a consistent way. And uh, so the work of, of, of these three, three gentlemen um, um, was just to, to prove that uh, they provide a set of, 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 of rather complicated rules. They're not so complicated after you're playing with them a bit. Uh, so this is generalization. You see, the, the, now the loop is uh, some cube binomial, and there are two types of digons with different types of orientations. They are also replaced by by the string and the appropriate cube binomial. And then, of course, we have associativity rule, uh, so uh, which means that a leg can be swapped from left to right through a vertex. This is just associativity condition. Uh, and more complicated square rules. Square rules are now more complicated. You can. For example, when you have uh, certain parameters k minus 1, l plus 1 on different sides of the square, you can trade it into k plus 1, l minus 1 with maybe different orientations inside plus, plus just straight lines. Uh, plus there are some tag rules, they are technical, uh, uh, I will not mention them. Uh, so these are basically all the rules you, you need to evaluate a statistical weight. And you can also put local fugacities for vertices, for bonds. Uh, the only difference is that we have just many more of them. Um, but the point is that uh, if any three, this general model gives back the web model I discussed at the beginning with the Kuperberg spiders. If n is two, we get back the Nyenheus loop model. And at special point at the, uh, this root of unities, there is again a very precise uh, map to uh, the 10 spin model. And uh, so the, the webs, the meaning of the webs, these are boundaries of spin clusters or, or or, or the domain walls in spin model. Uh, and partition functions agree. So there, there is a certain equivalence, if you want. Are those then the models, the like, variations on the Kazan's analog of the Parafermion model, or is it something more complicated than that? Uh, well, say again, what? The, the spin model. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 uh, and and so, so we expect, just from this mapping, that UQ certain web models, they have special critical point at any n, at least this one. But actually, there, there are more. Uh, and, and web models likely have larger critical manifolds, varying Q, X, and Y, and Z. I mean, we, we found some critical points, but it, it might be probably the phenomena is, is, is much more rich. Uh, but to investigate all these type of questions, criticality, we need a local formulation uh, of the model, analogous to vertex models for, for loop models. And, and then in this case, if we have a locality, uh, the locality enables us to construct transfer matrix and then we can study phase diagrams and so on uh, and critical exponents. And this is the second part of my talk uh, about local formulation of these models. And I will, I mean, it, it, it can be done for every EQSLN uh, we introduced, but I will focus on EQSL3 and, and, and this is what, what we actually published, I mean, like what is on archive. Uh, it's, it's a paper about EQSL3 local formulation. So uh, as usual, as, as, in loop model, as, as in loop models, we, we decorate now bonds with extra degrees of freedom, which you think about states living in fundamental or, or dual to fundamental representation. In this case, we have three colors. So we have orientations plus colors, red, green, blue. And they are, these colors allow to redistribute the non-local weight locally. Uh, and, and then taking su summation over all colors, we give back uh, the uncolored model undecorated model. And so we should think that at every now uh, um, a bond, I, I have uh, sitting uh, seven dimensional representation of local states. It's trivial because it's dilute case, trivial fundamental and, and dual to the fundamental. Um, 
Right, and then let me remind you the, the loop case. Um, so uh, in the loop case, you, you write fugacity as Q plus Q inverse. And to get this weight from a loop, we orient each loop in two ways, clockwise, anticlockwise. And every piece that bends at an angle, uh, for example, in the hexagon lattice case, we, we, we put uh, the, this, Q, uh, this X point of Q, minus Q minus 1, 6, and X comes from these uh, bond fugacities. And, and plus the, the, the inverse, inverse uh, configurations. Um, but uh, I would like to warn that it's better to think in the loop model, better to think of, of these orientations as colorings. So when we think about them, orientations is just spin up, spin down, but it's actually two colors. Uh, so these are not the orientations I use in, in, a, in the web model. So think about them as colors. And the analog of these orientation loop models is three colors, red, green, blue, uh, in EQSL3. And uh, right, and, and in, in, again, we, we have different orientations in, in web model because we need to distinguish fundamental and dual. Okay, now, now the, this EQSL3 web model, uh, we have loop weight, which is Q squared plus one plus Q minus two, right? So you see it's not Q plus Q inverse. So the, 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 uh, they have three colors and that's why I have to kind of put squares on them. So it's, it's Q one over three instead of Q one over six. And here you do nothing because it's just one. And here you give Q minus one, three, right? So when you, when you make a loop and you sum over all colorings, you get, you get the three, three Q. This is easy. Uh, uh, the tricky point is about vertices. So, so for the vertices, uh, we should put Q minus one, six or Q one, six, depending on, uh, on the orientations of the, um, depending on the arrangement of the colors. And plus, of course, a local fugacity weights. Uh, so this is for the vertices. And, uh, and, and the point that when you, uh, when, when, when you take um, a given configuration, uncolored, and, and then we can see the all possible colorings, and when you take sum over uh, all, all possible colorings with these local rules, we recover the, um, uh, the non-local non Cooper Burke weight. And, and the proof is just uh, using certain uh, colored version of um, Cooper Burke uh, rules. For example, if you, if you take, calculate the weight of this, so we, here with fixed colors of exterior legs, we have all possible colorings, here are two. If you calculate the weight, it will be the same as two Q, uh, and same for the square rule. So we, we, we have a proof that um, these this rules give you back the initial uh, non-local weight. And you can construct transfer matrix uh, out of uh, local operators uh, from, uh, again, this space H is seven dimensional, uh, so when transformatic is constructed out of these elementary blobs from h square to h, from h to h square, uh, the, the picture for notation is, uh, is this type. And uh, the matrix elements of these operators, they are just local weights I introduced. And then transfer matrix is just products of all these local guys. Uh, so you can see it's, it's kind of this double row transfer matrix uh, uh, diagrammatically presented this way. Uh, but the point is that every, um, every uh, local piece is uh, the way we introduced it's actually UQSL3 intertwiner, and it's, it's much easier to calculate or to think about it this way. So, so T of one, I can, I can write diagrammatically this way, and there are some factors which, which are responsible for these local fugacities. And every piece is a, is a particular UQSL3 intertwiner, which can be constructed out of very simple elementary blocks like uh, um, evaluation, coevaluation maps, uh, I mean, evaluation, coevaluation maps, which are EQSL3 intertwiners. There are two versions also with reversed arrows. And there are two other maps uh, which are embedding of trivial representation in tensor product in a cube of, of fundamental or projection of the cube of fundamental into trivial representation. And for example, the, the, the first piece of this elementary transfer matrix, the first term is just a composition of, of coevaluation with this uh, uh, with this uh, projector on, on, onto singlet. Okay, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm very close to, uh, to, to, to the end. Uh, so, so far, uh, I, I, I described uh, strip geometry, but uh, we have definition of transfer matrix for, for, for cylinder geometry. And, um, and now we can diagonalize uh, uh, periodic, with periodic boundary conditions, uh, transfer matrix numerically and study phase diagrams. And for this, we calculate, um, we calculate uh, effective central charge. So we, we, we draw a le um, sort of level, uh, yeah, plot, plot uh, of levels of effective central charge to understand uh, different phases. And for, for this, we, we, we study finite phase scaling of, uh, of uh, free energy density. Uh, so here lambda max is a usual 
um, um, uh, real value of dominant eigenvalue of transfer matrix uh, for, for several uh, consecutive uh, um, uh, sizes of, of the lattice. So L is, is number of hexagons or, or circumference of the cylinder. Okay, so this is kind of standard technique and uh, we can, uh, so uh, um, uh, Augustin did, did, did all these calculations. Uh, uh, we, we can write a plot for, for, for several values of, of, of Q, of, of root of unity of Q. So this is one example of such a plot. Um, um, uh, we, have, we have these uh, beautiful diagrams of, of levels of effective central charge. And as you can see, uh, somehow my pointer, uh, pointer, okay. A pointer is almost not working. So you can see the, the, this left region, it's C equals zero, but it's, it's not critical. So this left region and the, 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 this dark green, uh, dark, dark red region, you, you, you should ignore. Uh, there are two interesting uh, regions. Uh, one is um, uh, on the left, there is a kind of mountain ridge, which is uh, of central charge 1.2. And this we identify with a dilute critical uh, line. Uh, and at some point there is probably attractive uh, critical point on this uh, dilute critical line, but this is dilute critical phase, which we numerically identify, which is close to six over five. And then th there is this region, which is li li like a s uh, surface, critical surface uh, plateau of central charge uh, 0 0.8, which is close to 4.4 over five. Uh, this we identify with a dense phase. And, and these observations are consistent with uh, ON loop models uh, because on the line where this is a plot, X is uh, horizontal and Y is vertical. And when, when Y is zero, we have zero weight for vertices, which means we are in loop model case. But because there are two orientations, the loop weight is twice 3Q. So on this line, you, you kind of can see uh, uh, loop models and um, these phase diagrams are consistent uh, with what we know about loop models. Um, and right to conclude that uh, we have certain uh, nice generalizations of uh, loop models to certain invariant models with certain geometrical content uh, or using diagrammatical calculus of invariant theory uh, with applications to Z and spin interfaces and uh, we identified uh, several critical points and uh, actually the, the most difficult part of the work was uh, constructing electromagnetic operators uh, or open web configurations uh, the, the, the math analysis was uh, much more uh, uh, interesting from a mathematical point of view, but also uh, it's important uh, uh, physically because it's starting point for uh, column gas calculations. Uh, and uh, for, for CFT identification, this is uh, a third paper uh, we're still working on. And so what next? Um, as I said, we, we work on column gas description. Uh, one can also study statistical models for other spiders of type SON and SP2N. Uh, uh, we, we had some work on detailed, more detailed representation theoretical study, for example, uh, construction standard modules. This is, uh, there are still some, some, some open problems. And there are very interesting questions. Uh, it's still not clear, a link to integral models. Uh, and it uh, would be interesting to, of course, to, 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 to study maybe SLE type description of these uh, curves. Uh, because now instead of, instead of uh, Brownian motion, uh, instead of uh, just a, um, a random curve, we have curves with, with, with branchings. Uh, so, you, 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 so your stochastic process at some point can produce a branching again to stochastic process and then again branchings. So, uh, so th this type of problem uh, might be interesting for SLE people. Uh, and uh, I finish here. Happy birthday, Uber. So, uh. Azad, I have a question yeah. that you posed already as a question, namely, what is the uh, relation or link to integral models? Maybe one can specify that. Is there a direct way from the spider algebra to Hecke algebra, let's say, uh, uh. when having representation, spin uh, chain representations of the spider algebra? Uh. Um, uh, spider algebra is much bigger. Right, uh, because at every side I have, have seven dimensional. It's fundamental plus dual plus trivial. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, 
if, if there is a, di I mean, a relation to the Hecker algebra, then one can uh, write down solutions to the Mexa equation, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And but I, yeah. I know it works for three-dimensional representations of this spider algebra, but for higher uh, uh, dimensional, mm, so to say, realizations, I, I think there, there, there need to be uh, certain additional relations be uh, satisfied. Can you look at that? For what? For yeah, again? in order to have, uh, um, I mean, realizations of, of the Hecker algebra. I yeah. I, I think uh, it's not. It's probably special. I mean, you, you're right. talking about, about spin chains for Hecker, right? Tend the product right. of just fundamentals. Just fundamentals. But, uh, this is where, where Hecker appears. Only fundamentals. You don't consider duals. Okay. Only fundamentals. Yeah. But it, it, it could be a special point. It could be a special point in yeah. these models, we, but we don't know. Uh -huh. Yes, okay. it could be a special point when it's like, like fully packed or dense. I don't know, but like, like you, you don't have, because we have also di diluted thing, but also we have uh, combinations of dual and anti-dual. Uh, anti oh, sorry, fundamental, anti-fundamental. Okay. So the, the model is actually much, much bigger. Uh, so so what, what you're talking is a kind of little subsector in a sense. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Maybe discuss it yeah. later. Hi, thanks. Um, you mentioned quickly these higher K versions. Have you explored higher what? The high a higher level. Yes, yes, yes. Type, yes. Um, have you explored higher. the phase diagrams of those? What, no, what? no, no. Phase diagram only for SL three. Okay, okay. Phase diagram for only for SL three. Okay. The, the sum of the central charges for the dilute and dense fixed points seems to be two. Say again? The sum of the two central charges for the two fixed points that you identify yeah. is two. Yeah. Is it right. a coincidence or is it an explanation? <laughs> <laughs> ah? That we know the formula. What do you mean? We know? Yeah. We have, we have a formula as a function of small q. It's a coincidence that for this particular Oh, yeah. hmm. The last question. Um, thank you, Azad. It was very interesting. You, what, what do you mind by precursors of the Coulomb gas operators? You said. Ah, you yeah, they, 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 they are uh, the precursor for electromagnetic operators. I, I meant yeah. that we we introduce. Uh, so, so far I was talking about uh, if you want uh, zero magnetization sector, like closed webs, but we, 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 we introduce uh, partition functions uh, for non-zero magnetization and because the web sleeps on the cylinder, we can introduce electric charge. So, and, and, and we might have several defects. So it's not closed webs, but, but they, they emanate from certain points and uh, uh, the defects. Um, can be taken into account. So they correspond to non-zero magnetization and non-zero electric charge. And, and, and we studied partition functions for this sector. So it's like right. watermelon? Yeah, like, like watermelon yeah. exponents. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Azad, again. Thank you. Thank you.